Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to show you how to make this a wildly adorable Tacket Method tumbler. You see what I did there? Wildly? <laughs> okay, no more jokes, I promise. So today I'm going to show you how to make this wildly adorable zebra tumbler using the Tacket Method with holographic glitter and a black peekaboo. I'm starting out with a 20 ounce skinny from Maker Flow that I have sanded and washed with Dawn dish soap. And normally I do base paint my tumblers, but since I'm using a silver glitter, I'm gonna go right in on the stainless steel. There's a million ways to use Tacket, but my preference is just to dilute it with a little water. So when I get my bottle of Tacket, I squirt it directly into my Tupperware dish, and then I dilute it about 50-50 water to Tacket. And I keep that mixed up on hand so that I don't have to dilute it every time I reach to use it. But I prefer to do it this way because I feel like it just spreads on a little bit easier and I feel like I use a lot less product this way, which means my little bottle of Tacket goes a lot further. So my first pass around the cup, I'm just trying to get good coverage on there. And then my second pass around, you can see I'm just sort of smoothing out all my brush strokes, making sure there's no excess anywhere. And I kind of wipe my brush off as I go just to kind of get that excess off so I'm not spreading it around. And once I've got my nice thin layer, I just set it to the side for about 10 minutes to dry. It actually dries really quickly, especially when it's diluted with water. But typically, I just grab my heat gun and dry it because I'm pretty impatient. So once it's nice and clear like this, you know it's time to go into your glitter layer. And today I'm using Comet Dust from Bougie Glitter Boutique, which I have linked down in the description box. And it doesn't look super holographic on camera, but it does throw a lot of nice color even straight out of the bottle. But you're going to see when we burnish it here in a second that it's going to get really pretty. So you don't have to use a holographic glitter to use the Tacket method, but you definitely need to use a holographic glitter if you're expecting that rainbow finish in the end. All right, now it's time for the magic. This is totally my favorite part of any Tacket project. So now that I have my glitter layer nice and even, I'm just gonna take a finger or two and start burnishing it very lightly. So this is just a very light, gentle rub to help all the glitter lay flat, and that's where we're gonna get that awesome rainbow effect from. I'm just gonna work my way around the entire cup and make sure everything's laying nice and flat. And I do this over the paper that I used to glitter the tumbler in the first place because I wanna catch all that excess glitter that's gonna fall off. You're really gonna shake off about half of what you put on and I don't wanna waste that. So all the way around the cup till it's nice and smooth, pay special attention to your edges. Make sure you don't forget your bottom. If you've never tried the Tacket method, you're going to be amazed at what it looks like in person. The camera does not do this justice. And also, it's pretty amazing how smooth it feels after you get done burnishing your tumbler. So when you go to put your first coat of epoxy on, you can actually do a lot thinner of a coat than you typically would over raw glitter. I will say it is very important to go ahead and put a coat of epoxy over it to protect that glitter work before you move into the next step, even though it feels smooth. Just look at how gorgeous that rainbow effect is. So if you're looking at your tumbler and you feel like your coverage wasn't fantastic, you can absolutely go in right now with a second layer of Tacket. Just paint it over like you would Mod Podge for a second layer. Go ahead and let it dry, sprinkle your glitter, and burnish it down all over again. That is only necessary though if you feel like you didn't have good coverage. The cut that I used was a 0.015 and I was happy with it, so I went ahead and moved into my coat of epoxy. Here I have my first epoxy layer. It's 15 mils of CC DIY Fast Set, and I'm just hitting it with my torch lightly to make sure I pop any bubbles. And I'm gonna let that cure for about two hours, and then I'm gonna pull it off, and I'm gonna go ahead and move into my decals. It was actually pretty difficult to find a zebra pattern that I liked that fit my tumbler well. Most of the patterns that say they're seamless actually are not, and this one was for a tapered tumbler and I'm using a straight. So I just cut that far edge off so I can sort of cobble together my own seamless pattern in the end. And you can see me struggling just a little bit here. <laughs> my transfer tape that I love so much was out of stock on Amazon, and I had bought one that looked like it was very similar, but it is definitely not, you guys. But now I have a huge roll of it, so I'm going to have to use it up, and I'm going to make it work, but I'm just going to complain about it a little bit in the meantime. 
So <laughs> once I have that main piece laid, then I come back in with my little pieces and I sort of hodgepodge them together into a seamless pattern. So some of the places I overlap the vinyl and sort of take my X-Acto knife and freehand the edge of the stripe, um, just sort of do what you have to do to piece it together. Once I was happy with the way the vinyl was laid, I just gave it a once over to make sure everything was pushed down firmly so I didn't get a lot of bleeding under the vinyl work. Then I took it outside and I spray painted it with Rust-Oleum 2X Black in matte and I let that dry fully before I moved on to removing my decals here. Right about now you're probably wondering why didn't she just use black vinyl for her stripes? And the truth is there's two reasons. The first one is that I wanted a nice seamless transition to the bottom of the tumbler, which I spray painted all black. I like to do the darkest color sort of as like an anchor at the bottom of the design because I think it ties it all together. And two, I wanted the same design to carry all the way up to the top of the tumbler. To get a really good seal at the top of the tumbler, we want to bring the vinyl down a little bit as well. And I didn't want a lot of silver to show at the top. So in order to get the most seamless pattern top to bottom out of it, spray painting was the best option. Now where I overlapped the vinyl to create sort of my own stripe pattern, there was a little bit of bleeding you can see right under where those vinyl pieces met. So I'm going to show you a really great trick to clean that up. So I keep a little jar of acetone nearby and a fine, fine liner brush. So I'm just going to take that and dip it into the acetone, but I'm going to make sure that my brush is not dripping. You don't want it to run across the paint. You just want a very like lightly dipped brush. Then you're going to take that liner brush and go right up against that edge. And it's going to basically act as an eraser to get rid of those marks that we don't want. So I'm going to give you a close up here so you can see what I'm talking about. So like I said, you want to make sure your brush is not dripping wet. And then the other thing you want to be careful of is after you sort of erase that mark, there could be a little bit of haze you can see over the silver glitter there. So I just take my brush, dip it again, and give that a wipe so that that is completely clear and you won't see any haze under epoxy. After that cleanup, I was ready for another coat of epoxy to protect my paint, and then it was time for my decal. So with this busy pattern, you don't really need much of a decal on it at all, if any. So I just wanted something really simple. So I decided to use Stay Wild. And I don't know about you guys, but I just love red and black together. And something about animal print with that metallic just really made me happy. So I went ahead and cut this out of red metallic vinyl, and I did a black offset just to help it pop out a little bit more. After this final coat of epoxy, this tumbler will be ready to go. I absolutely love the way this tumbler came out. The holographic shimmer gives it just a little touch of interest without being too much for a busy pattern. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos from me. You can also join my Facebook group at a bit of bling creative community to see more lives, tutorials, and tips. All the products you saw me use today will be listed in the description box below. You can either take them and recreate this tumbler or use them for inspiration for your next project. As always, I can't wait to see what you create.